So, what do you do when a god shows up in your dream? What if they're angry with you? Can we dream hack it? Well, stick around and we'll find out. So what do you do when a god shows up in your dream? What if they're angry with you? What if they're yelling at you? Well, let's break this down. So if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that I have a particular way of approaching dreams that can be useful. And one of them is the what I call the number one dream hack. Okay, There's a, there's a video on that. You can go check it out. I'll put the link in the description. But it basically proceeds like this. If I take the content of the dream and I ask myself, my life is proceeding as if this is happening. That's a good starting point that you can go from there to figure out what the dream is really about. So in this case, my life is going as if a deity is upset with me and what I'm doing. So at this point then, I have a couple of questions I need to ask myself. One is, what am I doing when this God shows up? What are they telling me to do or not do? What is it that they're upset about? And then what do I do once I find that out? All of these pieces are needed to really figure out what exactly is going on here. Um, this question came about from one of my commentators. Um, someone put a comment in, uh, in one of my videos and, and asked me this question. He's a practicing Hindu and Shiva showed up in his dream and was very upset with him and obviously he wanted to know what was in the world was going on. So that's what this video is about. And so these questions then would be applicable for this dream but also for anyone else who's wondering about this question. Now I think what's going on is um, that it, in general I would say you need to listen to what the God is saying. But remember that the dream space is, in the dream space everything is a symbol and a metaphor. Um, rarely is it, is it exactly concrete. Remember, dreams involve memory consolidation, but memory consolidation is just one piece of the puzzle. W once I consolidate my memory into the most important things that I think, that the psyche at least thinks, are relevant to me, that of all the stuff that's happened, I'm going to make sure I focus on this and forget about all the rest. The psyche is not done. At that point, it needs to figure out, okay, now I know what happened. I'm arranging the events, one thing after another. But then I need to figure out, okay, so what does it mean, though? That's where the dreaming process comes in. Dreams, in the dream state, we take those memories, and then we break them up, and we rearrange them into symbolic narratives that tell us more about what it actually means. The, the full meaning of it, it's as if this is happening. Okay. Um, it can also be projective, too. It'll, uh, it can oftentimes be my dream is progressing as if I'm heading in this direction. Or it's trying to anticipate what future scenarios I might need to be in. So those are what I call what-if dreams, but this, the principle is the same. But let's say, just to give you an example here, if you're cutting yourself, right, and a deity shows up and says, hey, stop doing that. That doesn't necessarily mean you need to stop cutting yourself, literally. Because you might protest, but I don't do that. I don't, I don't do that, so why do I have to worry about a deity telling me to stop doing that? But it's not about literally cutting yourself. Okay, so the dream is going to be you're metaphorically cutting yourself. You're harming, you're hindering yourself in some way. And the deity is showing up and saying, knock it off, you bonehead. And that's where that's where the interpretation can be very useful. I can figure out, okay, in what way am I doing this? And the, the, the precise context of it will be within the symbolism. Okay, so this is where the, some of the harder work of dream interpretation comes in because the psyche is creating these symbols, but because it doesn't come from the ego, you don't necessarily know what those symbols are actually about until you work backwards to get at it. Okay. So then... Gods are a part of this whole process because gods are characters that are very potent images. They're resonant. 
Okay, we've got another video about that. So we need to look, though, at exactly which deity we're talking about here. Um, now, part of this will be dependent on your own culture and upbringing. But sometimes deities can show up that you don't know the name of. Because the psyche doesn't really care about that. It just it will use what is available in your memory banks, say. But it can also cr create new imagery. Um, so, if I'm in a dream and I'm interacting with a character that is a, a god, I need to stand up and pay attention because a god is a very powerful uh, symbol. So, it's not some other kind of character. It, it's a deity for a particular reason. Uh, okay, so then what do we know about gods? Well, they're immortal. They're stupendously powerful. They are either our creators or they're our, our great divine ancestors. Um, in some ha way or another, they're connected to our origins, usually. Uh, and with particular deity will help you figure that out. And so, um, because they represent our origins, they represent our core or our essence. You know? So, in this particular case, um, the, the person that brought this dream up said it was Shiva. And he said he was a uh, practicing Hindu. Um, but, now, obviously, I don't know much about Hinduism. <laughs> I'm not an expert by any means. And all I know is that there's many different varieties of it. Shockingly, just like there's a zillion different varieties of Christianity. So in this case, I would want to dive deeper into this and say, tell me more about this Shiva. How does this character show up in your dream? What, what is the context here? What do you know about? And what have you learned about this, this deity? And this is the reason why I need to know all this stuff is because the way that we understand a character in a dream, including a deity, influences how they appear to us. This is really no different from the way that we think about someone else and the way we conceptualize them influences how they appear to us because we project stuff onto other people. We do this to deities, right? Nobody escapes this. So that's why I need to know this because I need to know what is, what is the person's thought about this deity doing to influence how they show up? Maybe you're a Christian who conceptualizes the divine as a trinity and a host of angels and demons. Or maybe you're a pagan and you conceptualize the, the divine as a pantheon of beings from a world religion of some kind or uh, a tradition. Now, note that I said conceptualize and not believe in, okay? Um, because in this case, the psyche doesn't really give a crap what the ego says it believes in, okay? It, you could be a diehard atheist and say, I don't believe in nothing, and the psyche does not care. It'll have deity showing up in your dreams and, and smacking you upside the head. It's because the, the psyche is interested in using the imagination. It is not interested in your dogmatic beliefs or lack thereof. It is, interesting, it is interested in forming symbols and narratives that will help you coalesce yourself into a coherent person, uh, integrating you and all the different warring factions within you into a whole being. That's what it's aiming at. It's what integration is about, or individuation, as the Jungians call it. So, um, there's another group of folks sometimes that call God's thought forms, um, and they're kind of psychologizing religion and unfortunately, sometimes these people claim that this is inspired by Jung, but Jung never advocated for that at all. He never would have. Um, collapsing the entire concept of the divine onto the psychological is something he was very careful to try to not to do. In some cases, he crossed the line a little bit, but, but he was trying not to do that. Instead, what he would say is that if a character, if a, if a deity shows up in a dream, all I know is the psychology might tell me something about why it's showing up, but whether or not it actually corresponds to a true spiritual being is above my pay grade. I'm paraphrasing, but that's what he would say. So, the, and the thing I want to know, or I want to emphasize here, is that if you call it a thought form, it means that you are essentially saying that you cooked it up. 
Um, but that doesn't quite do its service because these characters, as we know, have their own autonomy, right? If I go to, into a dream and I start asking characters what, you know, what's your favorite color or, you know, what's, what's today's date or whatever, I have no idea what they're going to tell me because I'm not controlling what their responses are. They are. They have an autonomy. Um, and one of my most watched videos on this channel is Our Dreams Char Our Dream Characters Conscious. So I'm going to put a link to that one in here in the description too. Go check that one out. Um, there was a study that I reviewed that was done in the 80s by Paul Foley asking the question of whether or not we can determine whether dream characters actually have conscious awareness. And it seemed as if they behaved in every way like they did. So if that's, if that's the case, right, and really it shouldn't be all that outlandish because I behave as though I'm conscious, I'm pretty sure I am, and the psyche produced the ego, so why couldn't it produce multiple different characters that are capable of this? Something to think about. At the end of the day, though, we need to think about that when we're talking about deities as well. That means this deity has autonomy and its own particular way of looking at the world as well. So uh, calling it a thought form doesn't quite do it justice, right? So that's the problem with psychologizing it too much. So at the end of the day then, I think, the answer to a question that we posed earlier is it depends. <laughs> Um, and you need to take it seriously, even if you don't think it's, quote, real, unquote. You need to treat it as if it were, because that's what the, the logic of the dream space is anyway. It's taking the real life and saying it's as if this were true about it. Well, if that's the case, then I need to know what it thinks is true about it. So, the, the final message then is, ask yourself what, what they're upset about. What am I doing when they're telling me they're upset? And how did I respond in the dream? Because the way I responded in the dream is the way I would respond normally. I don't know I'm dreaming when I'm in it, typically. So then that may, may tell me something about what my patterns are, my habits are, that I need to examine more closely. And if the psyche thinks it's worth throwing a god into this to tell the ego something about what they're doing, then it's a pretty good indication that it's something you should probably pay attention to. And so then that's really the answer to our question is take it seriously. All right, thanks for watching.